Hello. Today, we're going to spend some time talking about the new IBM Navigator for I. My name is Tim Rowe. I'm the business architect for system um, administration for the IBM I operating system. When it comes to systems management on IBM I, we've got a couple interfaces that you may or may not be aware of. Our Navigator, mobile access, access client solutions, and of course, our administrative runtime expert. For this session, we're gonna focus in on Navigator. Now, Navigator's been around for a very long time, and this is the interface you're probably used to if you've used Navigator. When I say it's been around for a while, well, it started out back on the old PC versions back in 1995, and we've had a series of progressions on updating and creating different web interfaces over the years. The current version originally launched in 2008, so it's been around for a very long time, especially in the world of web technologies. Well, happy to say we have a brand new interface that we are rolling out that provides an incredible experience for the user, high performance, as well as the important key functions within the operating systems that people need to use to manage their systems. Additionally, we've got some pretty fun new um, surprises that we have hidden in this interface. So if we go back to, um, you know, some comparisons and differences, there's a few things to be aware of. With the old interface, you're primarily looking at managing a single interface. You had very minimal monitoring capabilities. Um, the new one, mm, we've got some fun stuff because it's really a client to allow you to monitor many systems. So really it's far more in line with what you may have remembered back from the old Windows interface. Additionally, lots of improvements when it comes to monitoring capabilities built on the very latest web technology. So enough with the slides. Let's go play with this thing for a little while. So to start off with, um, I'm going to start off with uh, this particular interface right here, just to spend a second showing you the whole process. So if I go to sign on, I'm going to sign on with my user profile. Um, we get a dashboard. And on this dashboard, you can see I've got multiple systems. Well, this first system is up and active. Well, this is the system that I just signed on to. Now, when it comes to accessing this interface, we've actually got what we call auth authentication methodologies. You can access multiple systems using either the user ID and password for the GUI node that I just signed on, or I can ask to have it prompt. In my case, I've actually chosen to prompt specifically. So let's go look and manage common one. So if I go double click on common one, I get to enter my user ID and password on common one, and I get taken to that system. I then get my connection, and I can now start to access monitor and work with common one. So for example, I can go look at well, say active jobs. And this will then pop up all of the active jobs on this particular machine. I want to find the jobs that, oh, maybe I'm using. I can go over here to current user and I can type in me and, you know, pretty much immediately the list gets resorted and filtered with just my jobs. Some of the things that are amazing about this new web interface, all of these columns, right? Obviously you can see they're all filterable. You can also change how it looks. So maybe for me, detailed status is something I really, really don't care about. So I can just drag and drop it and let's toss it over here. I really care about CPU. That should be the column that I care about the most. Current user, yeah, that's got an advanced type. Well, let's just throw that out there. Um, there we go. There's the view that I wanna see. Now, this is the view that I will see for the rest of the time that I'm using this interface. Now, talk about multi-system management. So I'm in active jobs here. Right, that's good stuff. Down here at the bottom, there's this little small up arrow. It's our system tray. And I have all the C, I can see all the systems that I've got defined for me that I would like to be able to manage. So I can go double click on this UT25 
and I'm going to be taken to now UT25 in the active job view, and I didn't have to exit, go anywhere, leave. Uh, it just magically reports in, and away we go. Okay, some of the other features that I um, want to point out, there's some new things that are here too, things that really have never before been available to you in some of these other interfaces. So if we go down to our, our file system view, you can see we have file shares. And in the file share view, you can see all the different file shares that are available to this particular system. We actually even show you a link to whether or not this particular file share actually exists, or if it's a file share that is pointing at a path that doesn't um, exist at all and isn't available. So you can now see that all from this particular page. Now you can see test share. I, I've got somebody connected to this. Well, I wonder who it is. So I can go right click on this and go bring up my properties. And I can now scroll down to the bottom and I can see, ah, there we go. This is my user. This is the workstation that has actually made the connection to this file share. These are all things that never before existed. Another feature that we have provided that, you know, uh, is often difficult to understand when people connect the file shares, they often make mistakes and they end up disabling their user IDs. Yeah, you can now go say who disabled themselves because they were trying to connect to a file share and didn't do it properly. Simple, easy ways to get to new features and, and, and information that's important when you're managing your system. You know, many of the, the key pieces of uh, technology that, you know, you've known and used for years, well, let's look at investigate data. It's here and you can go look at charts accordingly, whether you want to look at one or multiple collections, you can select many. So if I wanted to go look at, uh, you know, statistics by job user profile, I can load this particular entity and I can see this particular data. Now, this one here, maybe not the greatest choice because it just comes up in a table view, but let's go look at one of the, um, uh, maybe one of the others. It's gonna give it in a uh, more graphical view. And I can see the graphical view of the data in a very rich modern chart form. And in this case, you know, there's multiple charts that are showing here. So uh, lots of fascinating function that we've added. Um, if we go through all of these lists, there's support for configuration and services, new information like licensing info never was in the old one. Um, if I go look at systems, we have different ways to look at the disk information as well as you can actually look at and create watch sessions, you can look at your exit points, um, which are all things that were not part of the old navigator yet are incredibly important for managing your IBMI. So I can go take a look and see all the different exit programs and exit points that exist on this particular machine. Um, we do so have support for systems monitors, as well as uh, many of the um, important items that are under the networking capabilities. I'm going to switch over to a different browser so that I've got signed on with a different user profile. So I can show you the rich view of having many systems that I'm working with. So I've got many systems in this view. I can look at it from this particular, what we call our tile view, or I can click and look at it from a list view. It's super easy to add new nodes. Just click the add new, add new node. I can also, for system administrators, I can import and export my list of systems so that I can easily get other users set up with the same list. So some new features, functions that, you know, again, probably didn't exist in prior art. Um, one, oh, one last item, monitoring. One of the things that we've added, so from the dashboard, there's this little icon right here called custom charts. Custom charts gives you an interface where you can have a chart to monitor various metrics. Now, these monitors don't allow you to specify thresholds or, or things like this. This is more intended to be your dashboard monitor view. So you can see in this one in the upper right-hand corner, 
I'm looking at the active CP, the active number of jobs across four systems. So I can see, you know, if I get click on these, I can remove them from view. And there we go. I can see what are my active jobs on common one. If I wanted to see what were my active jobs on, you know, one of these other systems, right? There we go. I can again dial in, I can add them back in. Fascinating ways to take a look and see, you know, what's going on. These metrics are highly customizable too. If I go take a look at the metrics, we are making use of SQL services in new and interesting ways, unlike never before. We've made a strategic change to leverage those, and we are taking full advantage of those within this new navigator interface, including on this metrics page where I have the ability to add a metric, and the metric is an SQL statement that can be used to go get virtually any piece of data that I'd like to monitor. And the rich set of IBM High services that we have really feed into the ability to have some pretty fascinating metrics that you can add and customize to your monitoring situation. So how do you get this uh, new support? All this support is available today. Um, with the latest HTTP PDF group. And because we are using such a rich set of IBM I services, you also need to make certain that you have the latest database group PTF available. Um, it, documentation is available through our documentation support pages. Uh, so looking forward to um, hearing stories on what new features you think we should add to this as we continue to expand the capabilities of our navigator and continuing to leverage new services and new ways to manage your system.